Hello. We're going to be looking at WebSockets today and uh, something I've been working on. It's following on from my HTTP multi-threaded server. And what this is, is a demo of how to use WebSockets in Rust. And I'll test it using some JavaScript. So if you want to come and read what I've kind of documented and see some of the code, redandgreen.co.uk and then visit WebSockets with Tokyo Tungstenite. If you want to read the origins of WebSockets, it's on RFC 6455. Link there for you. Um, basically, they allow you two way communication, full duplex connections between a client, typically a browser and a server. Um, you can test it with curl or with Python or, or whatever. Um, and like traditional HTTP, WebSockets enable real time bi directional exchange. A deal for chat, gaming, and financial tickets. So I'm not going to read all this through to you, but I'll just quickly run over some of the key key aspects. It uses Tokyo Tungstenite and futures and Tokyo. Um, I've kind of broken down some of the lines, the particular ones that I had kind of queries over, and I've sort of analysed those lines. This is the main code, so not too long. There's a main function and then there's handle client function, much like I had in the multi-threaded HTTP server video. Um, so without further ado, let's actually look at the code. So quite a few imports here. We're using standard EMV, studenv. Um, we're going to be logging, so we're going to set the, um, the we're going to set the EMV to log level. And then the logging info will display when we get connection. Time duration, that's um, just to simulate some events. So we can base it on um, a real time sports results uh, website. Tokyo time, we're going to be using time from Tokyo. Um, I believe you probably could have used stood time there. We're going to be using futures sync ext, Tokyo net TCP listener. In the multi threaded web server, I used stood. Net TCP listener, so this is Tokyo version because it's going to be asynchronous. Um, so <clears throat> this is the main function, and it would it should look quite familiar. Excuse me, to the multi-threaded web server. The only real difference here is I've added a logging, and here you can see I've got instead of listener incoming, we're using listener accept and then dot away. So slight difference because we're using Tokyo. And also instead of thread spawn, we're doing Tokyo spawn. Handle client stream. And I think in the previous video, the multi-threaded web server was also handle client and not passing in the stream. Um, so the stream comes from the listener.accept. You can see it's a tuple, um, the stream being the first item and then just a throw away underscore that would be metadata if you wanted some in there the address 127.0.1.8080 you can change that to whatever you want to use uh, if you've got something already running on that port then just change the port the 127.0.0.1 for testing is uh, what you will need so this is the start of the handle client function and again it's handle client passing in a stream so this time it's a Tokyo net TCP stream rather than a stood net TCP stream. Async, so proceed the function name with async. So we're basically saying let our WebSocket stream equal, and then it's accept async, we pass in the stream, and then the await because it's Tokyo, because it's asynchronous, and then because it returns a result, we just unwrap it there. With production, we'd probably do um, expect or, or match even. So that then gives us a stream and then WS stream dot split and the split function enables you to get the write stream and the read stream. So quite a lot going on here and these this is kind of the the, the crux of the of this video and of this project really. You take the stream and then you split it. A bit like where you have a tuple with MPSC, um, multi producer, single consumer. So, next, 
still within this function, the handle client function, we spawn a new thread, Tokyo spawn, and then we move, so we capture the closure, <clears throat> or we, we capture the environment. Um, score, so this is this is because we're doing a sort of like a dummy sport site. Um, bear with another minute of me explaining this and then we'll do a, a demo and experiment with it. So the interval is 20 seconds. So every 20 seconds, it's going to refresh and it's going to refresh and uh, say that you know, England have scored another goal. <laughs> so if you've watched the um, Euro 2024 tournament, you'll, um, you'll know what I'm on about. Interval dot tick again, that comes with Tokyo, um, the dot tick method. And basically it's just a way to um, split time up into chunks, I think. Uh, score plus one, so every 20 seconds, somebody's gonna score a goal. Uh, so this is purely just to generate some data that the WebSocket can send, send back to the client that's keeping the WebSocket open. And then write.send, message text so that's an enum with message and message comes from the line above if it's an error then we break um if it's not an error then it sends it it sends the message this is the previous two um close-ups that you've seen put together so you've got handle client tokyo spawn um so we get the stream split into two and then we um, we use the write stream to send the message. If we wanted to use the read stream, that's just this bit down here. That's if you were sending something, um, if you had an incoming message from the client. And this is what you're going to see in a second. So when I start up the WebSocket server running uh, Rust code or the Rust binary, we'll run this. And then every 20 seconds, you'll sh you should see uh, an updated score. Right, so let's demo it. Um, Web SoCat, don't need to use that. That was when I was testing uh, with command line interface, which, so the <clears throat> project structures here. So I've got a basic HTML with no CSS, and then I've added some CSS and made it look nice. Um, I've also done a Python test, so I can command line so from the command line, I can run a Python script to test my code as well. Uh, I'll just show you the code, but to show you there's uh, no smoking mirrors going on here. So this is pretty much, or it should be identical to what you've just seen in the slides. So if we run it, cargo dash R. That's not dash R, is it? Cargo R. Right now we've got WebSocket server started listening on port 8080. Um, okay, so if I go here and go to live football scores, this is the web page running on my desktop. At the moment it says disconnected, that's because it was it's been open previously. But if I refresh it, there we go. And because we're still in the first 20 seconds, it's just uh, by the time it gets to 40 seconds, it should update. Get console open here. So this JavaScript is um, passing the response that's coming back. You can see 2 nil. It's passing the response that's coming back via the WebSocket server on port 8080. You get the idea in another few seconds, it will go to three now. So this could be a chat. This could be used for chat room, um, financial market data, stock tickers, etc. cetera, um, online gaming and so on. So uh, hopefully that's a good demo of it. Um, actually, if I just run it again, I'll just show you the Python test version as well. So if we go to my Rust directory, Go to source. Um, Python, Python test.py, and you can see I can interrogate or I can, um, you know, get the response and uh, 
Test it with Python. It uses the um, AIO HTTP async Python. Um, I was going to say crates. <laughs> um, I'll show you the Python code. So again, the the URL. So it's WS. If it's secure, it'd be WSS. We we're importing WebSocket and time. Um, and there's some functions there to measure latency and uh, so on. But um, it's running run forever, which um, in fact, where is run forever? Don't know. That's a function that comes free with WS, which comes from WebSocket dot WebSocket app. Okay. But yeah, just to show you, you can test it with Python as well. But um, if you just want a quick look at the JavaScript code as well, I'll just show you that as well. If we go into um, index two, in fact, I'll show you in the basic index because that hasn't got all the CSS and all that stuff. Uh, so here we go. This is the JavaScript add event listener DOM content loaded event, and then we're setting up the web server. Sorry, the web socket one two seven not not one eighty eighty. So <clears throat> add the event listener, and then we've got an on open function, which then it knows it's connected. It so it displays that to the console, so it's just a message. Um, w on message. So when it gets a message, it runs a function event, which then receives data, and then it passes the data and gets a score, <clears throat> and it updates the inner text with the event data. So I'm not an expert in JavaScript disclaimer, but that kind of makes sense, and I can just about modify that to uh, to do what I need. So um. Yeah, just um, let's just go and have um, a quick just overview of the code again. The key things really are to make sure that you get your head around the Tokyo spawn rather than the thread spawn. And um, yeah, the real the real uh, new bit I would say is is this bit here. So it's the um, it's the stream. So you're gonna need to split the stream to write and read. Much as you would um, deconstruct a MPSC for in a channel, you'd have that on the right hand side, and the channel on the right, and then you'd have the um, the TX and the RX deconstructed in a tuple on the left, so that you could actually uh, use either the TX or the RX or the the right or the read. So. Hopefully, this has given you some inspiration. And if you want to make it yourself, or even just run the code and experiment and <laughs> improve it, maybe, um, I've put a link. Excuse me while I scroll. I've put a link to my code here somewhere. Uh, because it's on GitHub. And. Just do control F for GitHub. Maybe I didn't. So I'll put the link in the video description and you can come in and clone it and um, experiment with it. So um, one of the things that you might want to start using WebSockets with or for is to integrate with AI as well. So for instance, chatbots, um, large language models, etc. So yeah, there you go. T tests, the rest tests and everything. So if you want to know how to get that little logo, you have to go up to the tick, go to details, and then you go up here, create status badge, and it gives you the markdown. And then you go back and then you paste the markdown into your readme, uh, which is top line there. Um, I was when I first started uh, ages ago. I was really envious of all the people with all the nice badges. So, yeah, you just click on the tick, assuming it's passed the test. Um, yeah.
But WebSockets is probably quite worth reading um, the WebSocket protocol. So this is December 2011. But I think it, it goes back here a long way before that even. And it's just um, a, a proposal or RFC to look at how to um, a two-way communication with servers. It does not rely on op opening multiple TCP connections. So yeah, that's that's the history to it. So yeah, if it's a rainy afternoon where you are, you could read that. So thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon. Please comment, like, subscribe. Tell me if you wrote, if you can run the code. If it doesn't work, maybe um, I'm doing this on Linux, but it's obviously because it's Rust, it should work anywhere. So um, yeah, thanks for watching.